Hi, GOR. This is Unit 3B, more up to Lesson 5, and today we're going to talk about rhombuses and squares. So the plural of rhombus is rhombi, so that's when you have more than one rhombus. And you should be a little familiar with both of these figures. Remember, they are all parallelograms, so they have all the properties of a parallelogram. We're going to start with rhombus first. So rhombi have the same properties of parallelograms. That means the opposite sides are congruent. The opposite sides are parallel. The opposite angles are congruent. The consecutive angles are supplementary and the diagonals bisect each other. Now remember, you don't have to memorize any of these because they are all in this packet and all of your tests and quizzes are open notebook. So you guys are lucky in that respect. Anyway, what else is true about rhombus? Think about what a rhombus is. So a rhombus looks like this looks like a um, parallelogram, except one important thing is that all sides are congruent. So that's the first thing that I'm gonna add, all sides are congruent. So yes, the opposite sides are congruent, but all sides are congruent as well. Um, and then there's something important about their diagonals. Their diagonals, besides bisecting each other, because that's true for all parallelograms, the diagonals are perpendicular. So that means if I was to draw the diagonals on my little uh, rhombus here, in the middle, they make right angles. Now, because they make right angles, this is actually a right triangle. So once again, I'm going to be able to use the Pythagorean theorem in order to solve some problems. And this last thing that's interesting about rhombus is that the diagonals bisect the angles. The diagonals bisect the angles. That is not true for um, parallelograms or rectangles. What do I mean by that? If this angle right here was six, uh, 100 degrees, let's say, the whole angle is 100, that diagonal cuts it in half. So each half is 50. So this little corner would be 50 and that little corner would be 50. It's hard to write on that. But you're going to see in the problem that we do together. All right, so this is a rhombus. Fill in the missing measures. So I know that um, this angle right here I'm starting with is 38. Well, that makes angle 3 38. How do I know that? Because the diagonals um, bisect the angle. So this angle has been cut, been cut in half. Now, opposite angles are congruent, and this diagonal up here also bisects the angle. So 4 and 5 are also going to be 38. Okay, um, and then let's see what else we can find. In the middle right here, this is a 90 degree angle because the diagonals are perpendicular. So I actually just have a nice triangle here. I'm coloring it in yellow. And I know that this angle is 38 and this angle right here is 90. So to find angle one, I would just do 180 minus 90 minus 38. Okay, so angle one is 52. And if angle one is 52, so is angle two. Because remember, the diagonal bisects the angle. And that makes six and seven also 52 and 52. Because opposite angles are congruent and they have also been bisected. And then angle eight is right in the middle there. Remember, the diagonals are perpendicular, so angle eight is 90. You're going to see tomorrow we'll do some problems with sides, and um, I might give you a side and one of the diagonals, and you can find the other one, because remember, that's a right triangle, so you're going to be able to use the Pythagorean theorem as well. And our last figure that we're doing is a square. So a square basically has every single property that you can think of. A square is a parallelogram, so it has all the properties of a parallelogram. Opposite sides are parallel. A square is a rectangle, so it has all right angles, and also the diagonals are congruent to each other. And a square is a um, rhombus, so this it's perpendicular in the middle of the diagonals, and also the corners have each been cut in half. All right, so it has every single property. Opposite sides are congruent, opposite sides are parallel, opposite angles are congruent, consecutive angles are supplementary, the diagonals bisect each other. 
Those are all my parallelogram properties because a square is a parallelogram. A parallelogram doesn't have to be a square, but a square is a parallelogram. It's a rectangle, so it has the four right angles and the diagonals are congruent. And it's a rhombus, so all the sides are congruent, the diagonals are perpendicular, and the diagonals bisect the opposite angles. So because I have right angles, we're definitely going to be doing the Pythagorean theorem in some of the problems. And I'll be able to find out more information about different things in the square than I can for other figures because the diagonals um, also bisect the angle. So I'm just going to draw this a little bigger. There's my square. This angle is 90, but the diagonal bisects it. All right, so this is 45 and this is 45. And then the diagonal this way bisects it. So basically you have some